Good afternoon, everybody. What's going on? This is Kamala Nash. I represent Lunch Point Project, holding it down. Um, one, I want to thank, start off, um, I want to thank everybody who had a chance to view the videos. Um, you know, why I decided to leave church. I, I've dealt with it. Um, you know, I thank you for taking the time. And also, um, you know, I'm not anti-God. I'm not even anti-church. I just feel like, as Dr. King stated in his letter from the, from the um, Birmingham jail, that the church is in danger of being an ineffective social club. And he stated that 50 plus years ago, and it's the actuality today. But I just want to kind of spit my, um, not spit like I'm rapping, but you know, I kind of want to speak my heart today about um, thoughts and prayers. You know, with the latest tragedy, we hear our thoughts and prayers. And I love these young people who are standing up and saying, F your thoughts and prayers. And people get offended by that. But in actuality, they got a right to be. Because if you're not willing to act upon what you pray for, then why even tell someone that anyway? To soothe them. Just keep it to yourself. Because as a former intercessor and a minister, I know some people are like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. And who dedicated probably about 10 years of study um, at this point, it's, it's amazing how we utilize prayer. Prayer, prayer has became like Facebook. You know, it's become a repository for inactivity. You know how Facebook, you know, you can like a thing. It's like, man, I like that post. I like that photo. Or I did this. I did that. So now you feel like you did something. But in actuality, you didn't. You know, if, you're, if your action don't match what you're doing on the post, then, you know, but it's become a repository of inactivity, just like prayer. Because to talk about prayer, to talk about prayer, to understand prayer, you got to know what prayer is. And prayer is simply communicating with your divine source, period. It's simply communication. We've made prayer to be spooky, this, oh, you got to, you got to be on your knees and you got to pray for an hour or two. If you're praying for two hours every day, you don't have a relationship with your source, with your creator, period. It don't take that long, you know, because a lot of times we try to pray like other people and we don't get the, the revelation. Some people, they have to verbalize in prayer. Some people, they have to meditate in prayer. Some people, they may need a cup of tea in prayer. They may need to sit up or be in a rocking chair in prayer. And a lot of times we teach this box in prayer, then you don't get a revelatory or benefits from it because prayer is simply getting the playbook. You, you know, it's like the quarterback. The quarterback has a mic in the helmet. You get plays sent in through the mic. If you never throw the ball or hike the ball, what's the purpose of even having to play? And that's what prayer is. Prayer is simply communicating and getting instructions or getting a deeper understanding about the next move. You know, Paul said, if you believe in the Bible, Paul stated that the kingdom of God is not in word, but in deed. So if all you do is I'm praying for you, you know, and many of us done dealt with that too. Me personally, you know, with what I've been going through lately, brother, I'm praying for you. Boy, I'm praying. Ooh, that's messed up. I'm praying for you. But then that person goes back and support the very person who you seen is causing conflict. I So why do people do that? Why did they say they praying for you? Then they go back and do some contrary to what they praying for. Now, I'm not saying that people, you sh people should pray or even that. I'm just stating that if you have put the effort forth to tell someone I'm praying for you, when they're going through some traumatic, make sure your actions line up with what you're praying for them. What you have went out of your way and you stop they day, their day to tell them I'm praying for you. Then you turn around and do the contrary or the opposite of what they pray for. Because prayer, prayer in its purest form is simply communing, simply getting understanding. And why do they do that again? Because you really not praying 
to get a revelation. You're not praying for understanding. Like, when you pray, you normally, if you believe in God, God normally examines yourself or your conviction or your intuition. He normally deals with yourself first. Prayer, meditation and prayer, it helps you see yourself. A lot of people, for example, they'll pray in churches. I've been in churches where they pray, God, bind the devil. I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. And now I bind it. Come out, devil. Come out, expose the enemy. Expose the adversary in a minute. But then when God exposed the adversary, because it's a person we like who's doing corruption, then we pray to God again to deal with it. And a lot of times those issues aren't being dealt with because if you believe in the Bible, those people who stomp the Bible without systematic theology and understanding principles, the Christ principle and all of that. You, you, you missed the whole point because God gave you dominion over earth. That's what they would say. God gave man dominion over earth, right? So with that dominion comes accountability. So if God shows you somebody doing something corrupt in your church, it's up to you to hold accountable, not turn away and use prayer as a denial mechanism to advocate your position to deal with it. You mean to tell me you know corruption, but then you won't say nothing in your church and you'll keep feeding it. Your presence will validate a thing. So by you keep coming back to the same corrupt institution, you are validating that. Then we turn around and attack our brothers and sisters who of same sex orientation, which I'm about to do a sidebar. And it's like, why? If those two adults are consenting adults, we got way too many issues in our community that are non-consensual to worry about what two people are doing in their bedroom. The only people who worry about what somebody else is doing in their bedroom, you either jealous of the person in that bedroom or you want to be part of it. Yeah. I don't got time to worry about what you're doing because these little babies are getting molested, children are being abused, and it's being covered up by various organizational leadership, then we don't say nothing. He's still a man of God. They still, uh, I ain't in the middle of it. I'm just going to pray. No, you're not going to pray because God going to give you the same revelation to go do something about it, and you ain't going to do nothing until it happens to your own child. Then you want to wage a war. Then you want to go to war with the system. Hold oh, on, nah, I'm just going to pray. No. Miss me with the thoughts and prayers. If you still contribute to thoughts and prayers and don't take action, oh, our thoughts and prayers go out to those in Parkland. Then you veto the bill. Our thoughts and prayers go out to victims of sexual abuse. Then you still ask the woman, then you still have the audacity to ask the woman, why did you wear that dress that night? You shouldn't have had it on. You was asking for it. My mama told me in second grade, that she didn't care if the woman was walking past me butt naked. You had no right to touch her. But we praying for those victims, though, the victims of sexual abuse. Then we never do anything about it with action. And you wonder why people leave the church because you don't have any fruit. It's like when Jesus cursed the fig tree. It looked like it provided substance, but when we came closer and wanted to partake of it, there was nothing left to eat. It wasn't, it didn't even have fruit. Rather it be a dying tree, I'd rather dying tree, I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I spew you out my mouth. That's Bible. Be, either be bad or be good. Don't be both and try to play both angles. And, and just to close out this thought, man, like, if you, or one of those people who I'm praying for you, but don't take action. No one's saying you got to take action. Just don't say anything. Don't waste someone's time. And, I'm praying for you. Let's bind the spirit together. Then God give you a revelation like, oh, shoot, money. You see a bank statement. Are you here? For example, they done took up five offerings for backpacks, right? Then you ask the question, God, bind the enemy. And God say, well, what happened to the backpacks? You don't need to say nothing about that. You just got your prayer answered. God is supposed to you 
the enemy in corruption, but because you like them, because we got grace for those who sin like us. You chose to say nothing. So just a quick thought. Stop with the thoughts and prayers. I mean, stop with the thoughts and prayers. If, if you don't really mean it, don't say it. Don't waste people's time. Because all you're doing is causing anonymity between real churches who are effective and people who may benefit from going to a church. You up here binding the devil. Bind it. Bind it. Bind it. Loose it. Loose it. I bind it. I bind it. But you never speak out against corruption. You never speak out against non-consensual stuff. A guy said that I was practicing Luciferism. Because you, you believe. No, I believe that God has empowered everybody with gifts. And it's up to you to figure out how to work them gifts. As I who give power to get wealth to establish my covenant in the earth, the definition of power is the ability to create an action. Now unto him, you know that scripture, who is able to do exceedingly abundant above all we could ask or think according to the power that work in us. That definition, that go that word again, power, the ability to create an action in us. Prayer gives you the playbook when you may not understand some things. That's the purpose of prayer. Man, how you pray, how you pray, man, I'm tapping into something. And normally before I pray, God deals with me first. This never, oh, oh, God told me, God told me to give you a word and your whole life is in shambles. That means you're not praying, you're trying to prophesy. Because gifts come without repentance. The difference between prayer is that it takes developing a relationship or a discipline to settle your thoughts, to control your breathing, or however you pray through meditation. Gifts operate without repentance. Repentance. That's why you got so many corrupt prophets and people giving these off prophecies. You know, one person told me that yoga was witchcraft. At the same time, supporting a ministry that's embezzling money. That's <laughs> I can't make this up. I can't make this up. Um, so what do we do? What do we go? Just be what you say you are. If you say you're praying for people, you want to see God change his city, you know, then start being in the city to make change. You want to see God change the criminal justice system? You want to pray? You praying that more Khalif Bowers won't happen? Then start helping bail people out when you know they're getting railroaded. You want to pray that God bring back families and God restore the family, restore the marriage, bring fathers back to the sons. So when God show you a father who's being alienated from his child, Say something about it if you really about that prayer life. If not, then keep your mouth shut. Nobody wants to hear your prayers if you're not going to do something about it. Have a good day. Appreciate your time. I'm out.